Hello, I'm Zane Morrow, and I'm going to be talking to you about film crowdfunding, uh, specifically with the websites that you should the website you should actually use, and the common mistakes that, that other campaigns have have done, including me, and um, and just some subtle advice on like on how to like make people contribute a little bit more. And anything that I don't mention can obviously be looked up from like other samples or just advice from like recommendations and everything and so forth. So why don't we get to it? So there are three main crowds, uh, crowdfunding websites, Kickstarter and Indiegogo and SceneSpark. SceneSpark is the more newer one. Indiegogo you know, it was also really well known um, along with Kickstarter. They they are the big ones, and they've been used for crowdsourcing with um, film, art, technology, and so forth. But out of those main three, specifically for the best one for making short films, features, documentaries, and anything more like media or artistic related, it's Scene Spark, hands down. Scene Spark is de is designed and dedicated towards er video entertainment, and while the other platforms aren't. So, Kickstarter and Indiegogo are they are are the most popular crowd crowdfunding sites. Yes, but it's also because they have they do so much more than just film and and media related stuff. They basically they do like fundraisers for benefits, sick. Um, sick family relatives, few, um, the families of lost of that lost someone, on uh, prototypes uh, for products that people would probably really want to have, um, comic books, books, or or just like benefits and 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 just like other like low income fundraising and so forth. There's all these, so there's a lot of them um, on both of them, and. Because there's all these different like campaigns and different reasons for crowdfunding, they have like dozens to hundreds, hundreds of different options. It can because of that their the whole media and artistic side of it is not as much of a priority and is very overlooked. It's very rare that the artistic side gets some sort of acknowledgement, um, which is a shame. But mainly, it's like if that. Yeah, the one the most popular ones like the Rock or Mars one or the Super Trooper ones ones. Those ones were the most popular because they're more established and had a better fan uh, fan following. Not everyone has that. So it's it's a very different. <clears throat> but yeah, but in general just like campaigns for short films and features and whatnot often get overlooked or ignored. But it's not the same with Scene Spark. It's dedicated specifically for Short films, features, documentaries, and shows. Um, so it doesn't. So you don't have to um, scroll through a bunch of like st product placement stuff or whatever. Now moving on to what else um, for Indiegogo and Kickstarter. They also rely on fixed funds, which requires that you make all your money or you don't get it at all, minus a five percent fee. Once you've Got it. I mean, that, I mean, that's pretty normal in this day and age. Like both, like the fee and also like get yeah, get all or nothing. However, but the main problem with that is many campaigns tend to ask too much. Repeat myself, but it's both and and uh, and or they don't give as much effort for, towards the campaign in in or just don't execute it in the best way. Or it just comes so close, but it still fails. Mm. But yet it fails. Like, like if you do a fixed fund funding selection, nine hundred ninety nine dollars will have your one thousand dollar ask. And yet, you fail. I know, it's a shame. But Indigo does off offer a flexible option which allows you to keep all the money that you earned in the campaign regardless of how much. Now, you may be able to get at the money, true, but it's most likely you're not going to get more than 25% of what you've asked, maybe 30%.
Let me tell you why. Because, because when you go to a campaign and it and you read flexible gold, people will take that as we're gonna make this no matter how much you give us. Let's just throw just throw a buck or two, two or something like that, and just be like very chillax in a way. So the whole like yeah, it does so it doesn't come off as uh, come off as we really need the money, money, or we can't, or in order to make this, or we just need to, or we really do, yeah, we really, really need this money, otherwise we can't make it. Uh, that's kind of like why, like, the whole fixed, fixed um, amount uh, is in place at times. Now, but flexible goals, they, yes, they're more optional, but unfortunately, the whole need, the, the ask isn't as needy, and it, Kind of just like makes everybody feel like you don't really need the money. You're just you're just basically like someone asking for scraps. That's unfortunately. So it's like if you're asking for the twenty-five, both if someone reads flexible goal, they're only gonna give you five bucks. So yeah, because they don't believe the urgency. They and they know that you're just gonna still move forward. You're moving forward no matter what, and you're only and you're just gonna give them five bucks rather than twenty-five. Yeah, and and it turns out if you only make like what three hundred out of your thousand thousand dollar ask, uh, it's gonna be really hard to make your production with that. But it's not impossible. But still, it just means you have to use a credit card for as much as you can, and only use the cash for if if it's necessary. There, but <clears throat> so that's like part of the whole flexible goal option. So, and, yeah, but what Scene Spark offers is kind of a good, good strong point in middle ground, um, or path, path middle ground area thing, but, I mean, the range, but how it goes is Scene Spark has, has a fixed goal in place, but they have a green light goal in place as well. What that means is, you have your set 100% goal, whatever X amount of dollars, but you have a green light goal, which is once your 80% goal. So what it means is once you've hit that 80% mark, 80%, raise 80% 80 of your money, you keep it. It does not fail. You get that 80% and all that money that you've earned, earned your 80% minus a, only 2% fee, you get, you get, yeah. How about that? Because people still get the urgency, is because you say, hey, we need, we need to hit this goal. It gives you more goals to hit rather than just like you know, the optional goal or the one, the one goal that's might be a bit too stretchy at times. But because of that rate and the other. Uh, perk that Kick and Scene Spark has, which I'll explain in a moment. And the success rate on it is is what is way stronger compared to the other ones. So, like Indiegogo only has an eleven percent success rate. And that's the one that has like the flexible goal option, and I'm pretty sure the flexible goal option is the reach of why it's so low. Oh, because if it doesn't hit the one hundred percent, it's considered a failure. Kickstarter in the same way, like I think, but it's also since Kickstarter is like more known, um, or has better has had better experience, it has thirty percent success rate. Yeah, but Scene Spark has at least eighty percent success rate. Eighty percent. Now this, yeah, this is primarily for you know film and shows fundraising and whatnot. Hunts, and you can already see the success rate on Scene Spark is seven times better than than Indiegogo. And twice more than Kickstarter. Yeah, twice more. And seven times more than Indiegogo. The other perks that Scene Spark gives is they give you personal feedback before you launch your campaign. And because I've seen lots of campaigns where I feel like they've only contributed, like they don't really tell me that much about it, or they just, they're lacking stuff. And like I've done Indiegogo campaigns before, and they don't get feedback. They're not good at, they're just not as effective. 
but the feedback on SceneSpark, they give you recommendations on where to um, strengthen and strengthen your campaign, whether it's the video, certain, certain information. They're not the best spe spell checkers, but so make sure you double check on that, triple check on that. And that yourself, but they give you the detailed you know, feedback, back, and it will help you so much more. And to keep listing off more perks, they also off they off, some of the perks that are given are offered or in the vicinity are like filmmaker rewards and additional funds, funds and sponsors from other participating in mem in companies and organizations and even rallies it's like for like competitions yeah other sites don't do that as don't do that or they don't do it as much and scene spark also supports loans loans as an option of payments if some people feel that they just want to be paid back they have that option and it also has a built-in distribution platform form if you want to put your project onto it and, and make and hopefully earn a few bucks from a few or whatever, or depend or that's just they have that option. It's just always nice to have that option. Now that I've told you about the main reasons to use Scene Spark, it's also time to talk about campaigns and, and a lot of times what the the reason I see others fail, you know, fail. A big one is due to the ask, like how much do you want? Need. And whatnot. Yeah, it's like when I see a short film asking for twenty thousand dollars, like off the bat. It's a bit firsthand. That's a bit much for a short film because um, ideally, if you're making, if you're asking for twenty thousand dollars, you can make a feature with that, and you could probably, and you could, and others who contribute could profit from it. However, short films still can cost that sometimes for a specific reason, and maybe there, there's. A lot of production value like stunts or specific locations or maybe you're getting a bunch of perks or benefits that would actually cost twice as much and you're only and you're getting a 50 percent discount so i guess that so that's fair you do have to give that details at first so hopefully you like explain your doing all that in your campaign but just like but for the sake of like the amount it's like if the amount is like once it hits the ten thousands and and going higher, that will intimidate a lot of people, even your friends and family, because hmm? it's like <clears throat> it's a lot to ask for, and you're not and you and your and your friends, family, and whoever's contributing, you don't know how many are actually going to contribute with you, and it's scare and it's a little intimidating. I know it's the biggest ask. So that's just the big one, but often there are ways, as long as you reinforce your reasons on why it costs that much, it, you make sure you back it up, up, and also give like more reasons and more rewards. Yeah, you can still do and still pull it off. Often, why not? Well, I'll talk about re I'll talk about rewards in a little bit, but we're gonna let's shift it to a smaller scale on like how on like raising the funds through the scene spark method compared to the other ones. So, say you, your current budget from like examining your script or idea is going to be like, is currently $10,000. Or if that's your theoretical planning before you look at any extensive deals and whatnot. But, you probably think you can actually make it for like about seven to $8,000. Off the bat, yeah. So when you're making your campaign, honestly, don't ask for the full ten thousand dollars, unless you have lots of rich and powerful friends, friends like friends to contribute a lot more. It's it's too risky, and basically you should ask for sixty to seventy percent of your projected budget. I'm gonna explain why, because if you ask for we're doing the, like this scene spark method, and then and a little bit of um, Kickstarter method, and then back back I'll explain. So based on Kickstarter, if you only raise seven thousand uh, dollars, then add your ten thousand dollar goal, you don't get it. Yeah, 
And the same thing applies to seeing the spark as well. Ask for 10,000, only make 7, and then you don't get it. Why? Because that's only 70% of your goal. Mm. So, what do you do? The, real, the best way to do it is, if you're asking too much, you still could have made a lot of your project with $7,000, regardless. So, the best way you should do is, like, back to what I said earlier, 60 or 70%. So, let's pick 70% of your budget, projected budget. If I ask for 77, sorry, $7,000 as my goal, and I would have made it either through either one, but we'll stick with the scene spark one. If I asked for seven, by asking that much, would have made it, and I would have kept the funds. But with scene spark, if I once I raised made it to eighty percent, would have been five thousand six hundred dollars. That then I would have been greenlit. And once you're greenlit, people are more excited and know that they're. No, that's going forward, and some will even contribute more afterwards. Earns, and I still have gotten the money. Yeah, the other, just the other sites are not really like that. So the point of seeing Spark is like once you hit that green light goal, and a certain, and you still get this amount of money. I mean, rather than your full 100, if you don't make it to your 100, you still get the 80 percent. You can still make your short or project with that, because having a little less money is better than having no money. Money and, you know, stumbling with your project. So I would just continue to say, just don't, don't just don't set your goal as your official full budget. Some, some campaigns do. Um, it's um, it's kind of rare, but uh, it's, it's very, I mean, but it's also very rare that they actually make it all the way through. But it does happen. However, there's also the handful of occasions where you actually make more than your your official goal, which is always nice. Nice, and a good way to do that is have a section in your campaign sh or a video showing like your stretch goals. Like what I would do maybe next time or in the future recommend to others is through scene spark. You have your 80% goal, then your 100%, and then a stretch goal of like. 120 if somehow you get more what say like in a in like a graph or little pit little graph you know, poster or whatever show like the what we can accomplish with just 80 per, with the 80 percent what we want to accomplish with 100 percent and what else could be additionally added with additional funds so having those stretch goals like acknowledged or just like letting people aware of what they can do is very helpful, and it could and you could earn past a hundred percent if you're lucky. So just keep an open mind on that. The next thing about the camp campaign aims, other than like adding all the details on how on like why you're making it and some sample or like lookbook stuff, um, is your is why are you off, what the kind of perks are you offering? I mean, like crediting the production, a post poster, a signed poster, a signed script, a private link of the complete project, and so much more. And more importantly, how much are those rewards worth? This is the area where it gets dicey, and every project is very different, evaluates them um, very differently. But this area, it's like for the most part, they're reasonable. But it's mainly the producer ones that are the pricey ones, and some people take make big mistakes on. Um, I usually don't see that many um, limits on like the amount of different on like the amount of different perk selections you can have. Just like because it's nice to have multiple options, but maybe sometimes having fewer options is just easier to read. So it goes back and forth, or maybe find like a. I saw a number like 10 or 12, just maybe 20 might be too excessive, but that's just the amount. But, but for the, but back onto the producer credits, I see so many times where you you have like executive producer and associate producer credits. Those are usually the top ones. 
Or I've seen it where you even have the option of just fund the whole thing. That's very rare, and uh, and I have never seen anyone claim that. But you know, someone could be the first, first to do so. But I see like executive producer ones, like they're limited or they are super overpriced to a point that nobody wants to get them. Like, like say if you limit, I've seen projects where they limit to one executive producer and bid it at like. Five thousand um, dollars. Yeah, not. Yeah, that that's just not gonna happen. No one, not that many people. Unless you make five thousand dollars in like an hour, nobody's gonna contribute that for, that to your project. So basically, it's like what I'm trying to say is like, don't overprice your producer credits and don't limit them too much, because like, it. These are very like independent projects. Having mul multiple producers is fine. This isn't like um, a Sony movie where, or a Sony or Disney movie where you only have like two, two produce main producers and like three executive producers. There's no. This is not that. You, there are no limits when you're limits when you're dealing with like this. Yeah. So executive producers and I like to even use co-executive producer credits as well because that's. This is independent. We can do it, and it's very flexible. Well, don't rule it out. Basically, the price tag you should be think considering is more like, for executive producer, I'd say within one thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. Or it also, if you're like trying to raise a production of like the ten thousand dollar goal, if that's the theory, or eight thousand. Depend, it does depend on like how much you're seeking. Co-executive producers, seven to nine hundred. Either way, I think it just depends. Associate producer, maybe like six hundred. It's very special thanks. Four hundred, and the amount of slots you can give. If I'd say like the top dogs, like executive producers, maybe four at most, or five. You know. Co-executive producers, eh, you can go up to eight. But, I mean, this is my view, but you can do whatever you want, but what I'm saying is don't limit them too much, because maybe there might be someone else that will be a miracle investor that will put in there, and if there's no other slots, uh, it's just a little weird. Even though I know you could still put random, random amounts, amounts anonymously, but still, it, it would be nice. Nice to, you know, give those selections out there. Yeah, for, <clears throat> alright, that's for the producer ones, but for the main perks, these ones are all, like, different price, but often are pretty reasonable. Well, like, like I what said earlier, the posters, scripts, behind the scenes, and also personal messages, behind the scenes photos and videos, first looks. So, like, sometimes some of them are short on supply, so those, um, as well, so. But for those main ones, I'd say in between 10 and 120, you know, depending on which one ones are which private link 200 each but if you did a limit limit for that one you could do like what was it like say if you put 10 for the private link for bid it at 200 for when it's complete they someone gets a private link to it forever and but if 10 people claim that that's 20,000 that's mm, sorry that's an overstatement sorry two thousand dollars dollars straight off the bat yeah so 20% of that 10,000 gold. And if you want, you can add more. That's so that's all, but again, that's all up to you. So the end part of that is just basically like when you're limiting everything, just make it an open discussion. And if it, if you really are in the limited amount of supplies, sometimes those ones are the ones that should probably be priced more or only have like priced more and only have, have this very specific amounts of spots. Uh, slots available, so yeah, just talk with your campaign and think, think uh, and see what you can offer. Because if you, but having perks is a big thing on getting these things, and they also they really like they want to see your creativity. They want to see what you want to bring to this into the world. Um, if you have you know, and so much more. So let's the end. So recap: use Seed and Spark. Don't use the other ones. They are very likely destined to fail. It's very rare if they actually succeed. Just see and spark. Get the eight percent. Make your make your project, and hopefully make a hundred percent. Yep. And also, don't ask for a full budget. 
you get asked for a re for like seventy percent of it and a reasonable and also make sure it's a reasonable amount. You know, that can be achieved. You get some cool and affordable perks. Be and just be creative. Don't be afraid to ask for what you need, need, need or what you can still do with what you get. I mean, just yeah, be yeah. So yeah, hope you thank you for watching and and tune in next time. Thank you.